internet. I'm Shannon and today I've got another book tag video to share with you guys. Now I know this is the second one in a week or two that I'm doing but um, I've got some really exciting things coming up in the next couple of weeks and I thought today I'd just film a sort of low-key video for you guys. I saw this one the same place I saw the last one I did and that's on the channel called Slanted Spines. Uh, I really love her channel and um, this this tag just looked really interesting. So she didn't, um, this isn't an original tag by her, so I'll put the original video in the description. So basically what it is, is it names a drink and then asks for a book recommendation that kind of goes along with the vibes of the drink. So let's just get on into it. The first one is Old Fashioned, and that says historical fiction recommendation. So for this, I'm gonna go with the first real historical fiction book that I remember reading and loving that really got me onto, I mean, I'd read them before, but this one really sent me down um, a rabbit hole of just loving and seeking out historical fiction. And that is 2010's The Virgin Widow by Anne O'Brien. And that book is about Anne Neville, who's kind of the forgotten queen of England. And she's one of my favorite queens to read about. And this book was fantastic. It just had my attention from beginning to end. I couldn't put it down. And it's about her and her relationship with Richard and King George, um, with Richard II and then King George. And it was just, it was fantastic. Would definitely recommend. Next up, let's see here. I've got the phone with my tags. Okay. Sidecar, book with a strong supporting character. I've read a ton of books with great supporting characters. The one that sticks out the most in my mind is going to be The Uninvited, or The Invited, sorry, by Jennifer McMahon. And I read this last year or two years ago. Now I'm not sure, but um, I loved it. It kind of tackled the question of what if you didn't move into an old haunted house, but what if you built a haunted house? And um, it just, I loved that book so much. And that book had this young girl as a supporting character and I just thought she was fantastic and she was the first character that came to mind when I thought of um, just a really strong supporting character. Next up, Bloody Mary. Name a book that scared you slash messed you up. Now for that one I'm gonna go with the most recent one I read that literally terrified me and that is It Will Just Be Us by Joe Kaplan. That book took the whole haunted house story to a whole new level for me. The characters were well written, the story was well paced, and the, the, the scary things in the book truly scared me. Truly. <laughs> it was the kind of book where I'd read something um, in it and then the next morning when I saw my husband I'd have to in detail describe to him what I'd read and that's just the mark of such a good book and I'm lucky my husband um, doesn't mind when I'm just all day prattling on to him about things I've read. So yes definitely it will just be us. Very scary and like I've thought about it every day since which shows you. Next up is a Manhattan so the recommendation asked for here is a book set in New York um, and I had to rack my brain for a bit because I couldn't think of one off the top of my head that was set in New York. But then I remembered The Witches of New York by Amy McKay and that book's fantastic and Amy in general is fantastic. My favorite book by her is The Birth House, which if you haven't read that I would recommend it to anyone. Um, but I really loved Witches of New York. Is it of New York or in New York? I think it's Witches of New York. Um, because I love witches, I love witch stories, and this was a really, really interesting one set in the past that just really spanned a lot of time, a lot of characters, and I loved it. So, would recommend. Um, next up, Espresso Martini, a book that kept you reading into the night. Most generally, anything by Lisa Jewell keeps me turning those pages obsessively. You know, some books you just, you know, you have no problem putting down, but Lisa Jewell, the way she spins a story, um, it's one of those, they're always a really quick read that you just can't put down. So uh, there's been many a night that Lisa Jewell has kept me up far too late. <laughs> um, let's see, Sazerac, book that left you disoriented. That's an easy one. That would be House of Leaves 
by Mark Z. Danielowski, I think maybe is how his name is pronounced. I don't even know how to describe that book to you. Um, it's a haunted house story, kind of, and it's just the way that man writes, because um, there's he has that and um, another one that I also have that I can't remember the name of. But just the way House of Leaves is put together, like the way it's literally printed on the page, as I would read that book, it's one of those books I'll never read again. <laughs> Um, I enjoyed it. Um, it was a slow read. It, it, it was a task to get through some of it some of the time. Um, but that doesn't mean it's not a good book, you know. Um, but just reading it, the way it was printed, the way things would be different on different pages, it gave me anxiety sometimes. So it definitely left me very, very disoriented. Long Island Iced Tea, a book, a book that is doing too much bonus points if it works for that i'm gonna go with we'll all be burnt in our bed some night by uh, joel thomas hines that book is great it's by a newfoundland author and it details a man's trip from newfoundland clear across the country to bc um he's on a mission and the book is wild and it's again it's the way it's printed on the page, different from House of Leaves, very different, but it's kind of written the way you'd talk. There's not a lot of punctuation sometimes or capitalization, and it just, I really enjoyed it. It took me on a ride, and there are some parts where you're like, this book is doing too much, but I'll also give the bonus points because it works. It works perfectly in this context. Next up. I don't know the name of this drink. N Negroni? Book with a love triangle. And uh, so help me, I read these questions earlier today and I have been racking my brain, racking it, to think of a book that I've read in recent memory <laughs> that had a love triangle and I can't think of one. I can't think of one. Maybe that's because I don't read a lot of romance novels. Um, but I just, I can't, and even now I'm like scanning my bookshelves to see if I see a title that triggers um, a memory for this question, but I cannot. So, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure, right? Of course I've read one, but I can't. I can't think of it. Okay, Bay Breeze, book with light, chill, heartwarming vibes. Any question like this, my answer is always first, foremost, and immediately going to be any Stuart McLean book. I love him so much. He writes collections of slice of life stories about one family in particular, and I love them. There's so many of these books, so many. Um, and he's who I always go to when I just need a nice, uplifting comfort read. You'll laugh, you'll cry, he's so good. But since I always mention him, I feel like I should mention something else. And honestly, any book that's set on or around Christmas is usually a nice, a nice read. And every year I try to pick up a Christmas um, set story because I just, I love them so much. And they're always heartwarming, always. Dark and Stormy, a book that's dark, thrilling, and menacing. Boning point, <laughs> boning points. Bonus points if the setting matches. That's easy. I'm going to go with, uh, I actually have two in mind. They're both written by Ruth Ware. One is called The Turn of the Key, and the other one is called The Death of Mrs. Westaway. Both of these books are so dark. You know, they're, they're dark, they're thrilling, and the setting in both of these absolutely matches. They both take place in a big house with a lot of property and like in the death of Mrs. Westaway, it's an old like Gothic Victorian manor. And then in the turn of the key, it's literally the opposite. It's a smart house, which sounds like an absolute nightmare. Um, just where everything inside is very new, very upgraded, and it's all sort of run through computers. And sometimes you can't override those computers <laughs> when you need to. 
so definitely those two. Ruth Ware is great at that atmospheric, dark, unsettling, both stories and locations. And I love that. And finally, Martini. And that is simply a classic recommendation. I mean, I've recommended so many classics here. We're currently, just to plug a series we're doing here, we're currently reading Pride and Prejudice on this channel. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in listening to. I've got a whole playlist. We're up to, I think, chapter 41. <laughs> um, I also really love, if you want something maybe a little, a little different than that. Um, Anna Green Gables is a great classic read. Uh, Little Women. I love, I love Hemingway at this point. He'd be classic, right? Um, I love him. I'm actually planning on doing a video dedicated to my favorite of his work, most of which are short stories. I know that Hemingway um, has, you know, through the years, in more recent times, been viewed at as problematic, but um, I think, you know, times were different and I still really appreciate his stories. And yeah, I think I'm gonna do a whole video dedicated to Hemingway very soon. So there you go, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know any of the answers to these questions down below. If you've got a channel and you'd like to film your answers, I would love to hear them. So yeah, I will see you again real soon. We're gonna be doing a book talk finally finally on Mexican Gothic. I finally started reading it. It is, I'm really enjoying it so far. So we've got that to look forward to. Hope you guys have a good day or what's today, Thursday, good weekend, and I will see you really soon. Bye.